All right, let's look at this puzzle. This will be an easy one. So maybe if some of the other ones have been more difficult and you uh, needed it, this one should be a lot easier. Okay, so like to move. So that's right there on the screen. So the thing you have to look at. Well, I mean, it's pretty basic because look, how many pieces do we have? We got four pieces. Three of them are attacking his king side, right? So what do we have? We got a bishop attacking a pawn. We got a queen attacking a bishop. And uh, that's also attacking that same pawn. And we also have that rook is amplifying the attack of the queen onto that pawn again. So, um, I mean, I've mentioned that pawn in relation to three different pieces. So, I guess we should look at the pawn. Since three pieces essentially are attacking this pawn, that might be of some help and give us an idea that, you know, if all these guys are concentrated on one pawn, maybe we got something. So, one of the most basic things you do is you look at a position like this and it's like, okay, we see this pawn is under attack. Um, how many pieces do we have that are attacking this pawn? We have bishop plus queen plus rook. That's three guys. And how many defenders of the pawn does he have? The knight does not defend the pawn. The queen does not defend the pawn. Neither bishop defends the pawn. So he's got king and rook. That's two. So one of the basic things is, hey, can I, can I win if I make an exchange on this square? I have one, two, three attackers. He's got one, two defenders. Okay, that means the numbers, three is better than two. So three says, I'm going to take it. Now, what you have to worry about, potentially, is you make an exchange sequence and then he adds a third piece to it with a queen check for some exam for some reason. Just, you know, problem for black is that, uh, um, well, okay, you look at the numbers, three versus two, That's that tells us, number one, we can do that. Now we look at it again and go, okay, what you also have to look at is what is known as order of attack. Order of attack means can you attack the target with your least valuable pieces first? Which in this case, the, the what do you what's the least what's the least valuable piece we can attack this pawn with? Pause the video if you need to think about it. Okay, so hopefully you answered the bishop. So. Now, the order of attack, if you look at this, let's just look at this pawn on g6. We have bishop takes pawn, which is our least, mo our least valuable piece attacking it. After the bishop takes the pawn, we have the queen is second and the rook is third. Ideally, you know, queen would be third. It'd be bishop, rook, queen in that order as far as the value of your pieces attacking normally. There's going to be, sometimes it's just like this one, it's reversed you know, where you have bishop first, then queen second. Probably is going to be all right, but, you know, and, and obviously this also counts when you do pawns, but pawns have to go first. You can't attack with your queen first, your rook second, and your pawns third. Most of the time, because if you do, you're probably going to lose material. So you've got to count the number of pieces, which we did, three versus two, which is that, you know, that first test is a, is a go for us. Second test is order of attack. Can we hit with low order to the point where when we use our big order piece, our most valuable piece, the queen, it won't be lost. And if you look at that, it looks like well, if we have bishop takes pawn and say he plays rook takes pawn, rook takes bishop. Then we can play queen takes rook and it's check and he cannot take it. So that's safe. So the second test, order of attack, we, we pass. So first test is who's got more numbers. And, it, and if it's a tie, 
you know, if it's three to three, that means the defense is winning unless unless the exchange changes the properties where the remaining pieces have a vulnerability. Like you catch like you catch a uh, bishop in, on the defending guy would have a bishop and you'd have a, a rook or a queen on a file where it's pinned and the bishop can't move. Or if you have a knight that's pinned diagonally by a bishop. If you unless you have this change of of forces as a result of this exchange then you're going to have to, um, you know, analyze it further. But we did number three versus two is a, is a go. The order of attack, we end up with queen checking with no one to take it. So the order of attack was a go. So now, our basic preliminary tests tell us we have go and go. So let's go. Let's, let's look at it. Okay, bishop takes pawn. I think it's a mistake if he if we he took rook takes bishop. He's giving up a rook and a pawn for a bishop. Unless he's forced to do it, which I don't think he's forced. But let's look at it. Bishop takes pawn. If he plays rook takes bishop, that's the most challenging move to our capture. Capturing our guy. Because maybe we couldn't take it back. Well, we take it back, queen takes rook check. And he's not capturing, he's running away. So you're like, hmm, running away? He only has two squares. So you see the squares he can go to are black. Now, and I'm, and I'm always doing this with my voice, telling you these things. My mind, I'm visualizing these occurring. This is what you have to do in tournament games. You got to visualize what I'm saying, you want to see this, you know, combination. You're looking at this board and you're like, okay, this 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 pawn's replaced by the bishop. Rook takes the bishop. Queen takes the rook. So the queen is on g6 right now and the knight is on h6 and the rook is on g1. The bishop is gone because we exchanged it off. Okay, so then he has to retreat. Well, the queen is on g6, so his king cannot go to f7. His king cannot go to g8 because the queen's there checking him. So he has only f8 or h8 to go to. And if he goes to either square, pause the video and try to figure out what move you would play if that's the case. And we're back. Okay, hopefully you saw the, the, the response for why it would be queen to g8 which is actually checkmate, doesn't matter which way he goes, either f8 or h8. So, my first, my first test said go, second test said go. This direct analysis says, hey, I can take this pawn, all right? But actually, the problem, there's a problem with that, what I just told you. Now, pause the video and try to figure out what's the problem with bishop takes g6. And we're back. All right, this is, the, this is another kind of part of the order of attack. If we play bishop takes g6, well, whoops. He doesn't have to take the bishop. He can take the queen. That queen's under attack, so you're like, oh. Oh, man okay so I can't do that so like like I said normally you want to attack with your least with your least valuable piece turns out that isn't gonna work so let's let's reverse it with you know if the bishop can't take first can the queen take first we're looking when you're looking in the position like this this looking is free it doesn't, you know, you're not making a move. You're just, you know, you have a clock that's going and you have plenty of time um, for the most part. So what happens if we play queen takes g6 check? Well, he doesn't have to take it. But if he doesn't take it, you've already seen that queen to 
G8 is checkmate. No matter where he goes, it doesn't matter. That part remains the same from that previous analysis that we went through. So queen takes pawn check, rook takes queen. Ha ha, I got a queen for a rook. And you go, well, um, I think it's obvious taking with check is better than taking with the bishop. So rook takes rook check. And look what happens again. He's got to go back to f8 or g8, and then what do you do to win the game? Hopefully, you see that rook to g8 is checkmate, just like it was when the queen went there. So, you figure this out, you go, okay, great. Now, in the tournament, that's cool, we figured out. Let's look at it one more time, go through the whole sequence. So we're sitting there going, okay, bishop takes, loses the queen. So we can't do it. Going to play queen takes, g6 check. That's move one. He's going to take our queen because if he doesn't, we go queen g8. He's checkmated. So he takes a queen. Move number two for us, rook takes rook check on g6. He's got to go either to f8, and then we go rook to g8 is checkmate. So that's a win. But if he doesn't go to f8, he goes to h8, then rook to g8 is also checkmate. Boom, we got this. And in the, you know, tournament game, I'm playing queen takes g6 check. Which is correct, as you see from the coach. Rook takes rook check, baby. It's easy to play these moves, or easier to play them when they're checks. Game over. Score, we win, good job. Okay, hopefully this is going to help you out. This is exactly how you do it in tournament games. You know, we had the, we did the test for the number of attacks. We did the test for order and then realized, hey, wait a second. Bishop takes queen. We got to avoid the mistake. We avoided the mistake. This is exactly how you play in tournaments and win positions when you get the opportunity. So the more you see it, the better you get at it. Okay? So great. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. You guys know what to do. Talk to you later.